And very good morning, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Here Flying in the Microsoft Flight Simulator with Captain Christian. Today, we are here in Guayaquil Airport in Ecuador, South America, using our fantastic uh, mod from Fly by Wire guys, this Airbus A320neo, the mod, which is uh, really good. Uh, still a lot of work to do, but now we can at least fly. Uh, and for what I'm planning to do today is very good. So let's uh, get into the cockpit. It's very noisy out here. And uh, what is the plan for today? Well, the plan for today is a little bit of a mix of old school versus new school. New school is going to be because I'm using the A320neo, uh, a super fancy, fully automated airplane. But today I'm not going to fly the airplane as, uh, you know, following all the SOPs and following all the procedures that we would normally do. Today I'm going to use this as a platform to practice my old school, you know, good, good old days flying. So how is that? I'm going to use only raw data, VOR to VOR and ILS navigation, like in the good old days, no magenta lines, no RNAVs, no nothing. But I'm going to use the advantage of this airplane in the, especially in the fly-by-wire, which is a great help, and the auto thrust which which is all also a big help a big help so uh, and a lot of other small details that also help you big time versus flying the same the same procedures in an old airplane like a 727 or a 737 classic so that's a lot of help by using this airplane and of course, nobody will fly like this in real life. This is just I'm me taking advantage of the flight simulator to, to do this kind of flight that for now with the mods is doable. Still more advanced flying is uh, not really that we are not really there yet. The guys are working and they are fantastic on what hype and what they have accomplished so far but still a lot of work to do. But to practice something like what we are going to do today is, is fantastic, it's more than enough. So what is the plan? Let's go to the charts. We are here in Guayaquil, South America and Ecuador. And the plan is to fly a very short flight from Guayaquil to Cuenca. Guayaquil is basically sea level. Cuenca is high elevation, 8,300 feet. Now, we cannot go straight, as you can tell, because we have here this prohibited and restricted areas so we will have to take the airways so alpha 566 is the airway that we will take that take us from guayaquil southbound and then we make a turn to the east towards the cuenca bor all right so uh in terms of minimum altitudes you can tell this initial leg is, is the MEA minimum and root altitude is very low, 3,000 feet. But in this leg here, look, it grows, it goes up to 14,000 or flight level 140 and then flight level 170 all the way to Cuenca VOR. So that is because we have the, the Cordillera, the high uh, mountains here. And uh, this airport itself is very high elevation, 8,300 feet. Uh, it's a very short runway, 1,900 meters only, or 6,200 feet only, which is pretty short for this airplane anyway. So, what is the idea? And again, uh, as, as I said before, I'm going to do this raw data no magenta lines, just like the good old days, what we used to do in the good old days. So let's see from key from sorry from Guayaquil, these are the departures that we have. And we are planning to go to this waypoint here, Everett. So we can tell we have two departures here, this this one and this one. 
So this one is the one that we are going to use. The other one, the first one, we are not going to use because, as you can tell, this one requires RNAV1 or RMP1. And if we are flying raw data, VOR to be aware, we don't have that. So yeah, of course, the Airbus has that capability and in real life we could use this one, but for our practice today, that's not the case. So we are taking this one. This one is Everett 3 departure. And uh, what is the procedure? So we take off from runway 21 from Guayaquil VOR up until mile 5 or 5 DME that we have to cross at or above 500 feet. So that's not a problem. And then we have to turn left to intercept radial 175 from Guayaquil to cross 10 miles at or above 1,600. Again, that's not the altitude, so not going to be any problem. And then we continue to Everett. So Everett is in total a distance of 40 miles from the Guayaquil VOR. So that is the departure, and then we turn here, uh, 095, towards the Cuenca VOR. We are going to climb to flight level 200, and then eventually we can descend here. Now, the descent initially will be only to 17,000 feet until the VOR, and from there we will do an ILS approach which is this one, I believe, yeah, ILS Yankee, correct. So ILS Yankee, but take a look at this. ILS Yankee starts at 15,000 feet. MSA, this is for emergencies only, is 17,000 to the or to the area that from where we're coming from. And the M minimum route altitude is 17,000 in that area as well. So as you probably can tell, we are not allowed to descend lower than 17,000 until uh, unless we are in radar vector, which is not the case here in Cuenca, there is no radar. So we can only descend in the airway up until the VOR down to 17,000 feet. And from the VOR, we continue to descend. But this is going to be very, very tight. If we cross the VOR at 17,000, and then we, we will have to descend and it's going to be tight. And even for practice, I think I prefer to do this. I'm going to cross the VOR at above 17,000, join the holding pattern here, maximum 200 knots. Uh, let's see, yeah, maximum 200. So we will be here at around 180. And uh, do one turn in the holding pattern. In the holding pattern is minimum 15,000 feet. So it means within the hold, once we are in, in the holding pattern, we can start the descent from 17 down to 15,000. This holding pattern 261 outbound 081 inbound right turns and of course because it's higher than 14,000 feet it's going to be one and a half minutes. So that's what we will do again. Everything is going to be raw data. The entry, as you can tell, is going to be very simple. It's a direct entry, no problems there. And the, the plan is to be established at 15,000 feet once we cross the VOR for the second time, and then we can we are in a good place to start the procedure. The procedure goes from 081 out one leg to the mile 7, distance 7 DME, then left turn to intercept the localizer, descending all that, descending to 11,700, 12,500 until initially the start of the turn, and then down to 11,700, and to intercept the glide slope at the final approach point here at 10.1 DME from the ILS, which is frequency 110.9235, and then descend in a glide of 3.2 degrees actually, down to minima, which is 86.30. So that is basically the plan. And uh, without any further ado, let's uh, jump into the cockpit and let's do this. Okay, here we are with the airplane, and uh, even though it's uh, going to be a raw data uh, exercise, we still need to program a little bit of information so they can, the computer can help us. So let's start doing that. So we select FMGC here, we check that the database engines and all the information here is correct, which it is. Then we go to the init page, and all the block, all the amber boxes, 
means uh, that's information that the computer needs. It's the minimum information that the computer needs. So let's go ahead and send from Segu to Segu, Guayaquil to Cuenca. We will enter that here, return. Now we're not gonna change uh, alternates or flat numbers or anything. I'm not gonna worry about that. Cost index 50, it doesn't matter. Cruise altitude, we said we're gonna be flying at flight level 200. And again, I'm not gonna change temperatures or drop a pulse or any of that stuff. Gonna go ahead and go direct to flight plan, select Guayaquil, select departure from runway 21. And that's it. That's all the information that the computer needs to know. And arrival, we're going to enter Cuenca. Arrival, and we're going to do the ILS2 for Yankee. Put on or via the Cuenca VOR. We're going to insert that as well. So now the computer has all the information that needs. Uh, we still need to enter performance and weight information. We'll do that in a second. GPS primary, we can clear that message. Okay. And for the nav radio, we need, uh, so here we go, we need uh, VOR from Guayaquil 115.9 and a course of 175. So I'm going to enter that on nav radio 1, 115.9 with a course of 175. And we need to confirm that Golf Yankee Victor is identified, which it is. And then on nav radio 2, I'm going to enter the Cuenca VOR 114.5 and the 095. A radian there, so 114.5 and the 095 course. And again, Charlie Uniform Victor is identified, which is correct. Uh, a little bit weird because at this point in, uh, in, in space, being in Guayaquil with the mountains blocking the, the signal from Cuenca till here, probably in real life we won't be able to receive any signal from the VOR, but eh, well, anyway, flight simulators are not that uh, correct still. Okay, anyway, let's continue. So we have the data, the init page one, the flight plan, the radio now. Let's go to init plan B. And we here enter the zero field weight and zero field weight CG. So zero field weight 50.3, CG 21.6. Okay. Fuel on board 9.2. No, that is too much. So let's uh, change that a little bit. No, that's not what I want. Okay, so cages and let's take about five tons. That should be enough. 4.5 fuel. Let's go to five. Uh, 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 oops. 30, 27, 5.5. Okay, that should be more than enough. So we have 5.3, the zero fuel weight, 29.6, the zero fuel weight CG, and uh, 5.1, the fuel on board. So that should be okay, 55.3 gross weight with 21.8 of the gross weight CG. That sounds about right. Now let's go to performance information. We're gonna go, we're gonna do a flops one plus F departure. Temperature, flex temperature, we can we can think about uh, 60 degrees here. Transition, and here we need to check the chart real quick again. Oh. Let's go by a key charts, I believe transition is 3000, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, transition 3000, air elevation 18. Okay, so 3000 is the transition altitude and 18 so we're gonna do a noise abatement takeoff here the old one 1520 for thrust reduction and 3020 for acceleration engine out acceleration is okay so v speeds will be 127 v2 123 vr 122 v1 okay 22 23 27 that's the performance and progress page we can set uh, why a kill from runway 21 just to have a reference in case we need to come back immediately. Uh, okay, we got the bearing distance is correct for that. Secondary, that's still not working. So yeah, I think we have all for now. What else we can do here? We can go ahead and go to the ATSU AOC menu and request the weather for Guayaquil and Cuenca. Let's send that. So we'll be able to check, uh, hopefully the weather will cooperate today. 
So we've sent that. We need to wait until we see a company message here. Let's go back to the main menu. Uh, okay, so let's wait a little bit. Turn to, okay, there it is, company message. We go to receive messages, meter, and here we have, we can, this is one of the things that I love about this modification. We can print this thing, and we will see here in the printer, there it is, printer is working. Great, that's awesome. Uh, that, that animation is amazing, really. Okay, so we tear this page up and set it here. And now uh, let's zoom a little bit so we can read. And let's go to performance again. Okay, so where I kill at uh, 13. Yeah, that, that, that sounds okay. Win 250 at 4, variable between 200 and 290, visibility greater than 10, ceiling broken 2300, overcast 10,000, 25 degrees, which is correct. And QNH is 1012, no significant changes, and that is 2988, all right? And Quaint our destination. And uh, on the 25, same at 1300, okay, 320 at 3, all right, mm, greater than 10, the visibility is gathered at 3015 degrees slash 12, and QNH 1027, all that looks good. So, 2988 one zero one two two nine eight eight one zero one two one zero whoops one zero one two and let's uh, two nine eight eight one zero one two there we are one zero one two forty twenty forty that's okay that that that's all good now we are gonna use rose VOR for this uh, practice and it's already set at the course of one seventy five which is what we have or what we want and we are going to select the bearing pointers the left one or the single q or the single line bearing pointer is going to point in towards the golf yankee victor the guayaquil bor and we have her dme down here and the double pointer will be selecting or will be pointing towards the cuenca bor cuv charlie uniform victor and here is the dme and again we shouldn't be receiving this signal here because we have huge mountains blocking the signal but anyway that's that's not important at this point all right so that is that now let's set uh, here we need to set our heading which will be runway track or runway heading which is about 213 and we're gonna go to fly level 200 as we discussed before 200 is set all right so let's set for the first officer as well and set him for the same practice with Rose VR. Okay, guys, I think that is all set up here. Now let's see up in terms of lights, they are all set already. Uh, okay. Good. Okay, so it's all set. Let's check here. We need the GCS in auto and multi scan in auto. I'm not going to use the weather because the weather is crap uh, in this uh, flight simulator. In every flight simulator, the weather radar is crap. It's not working well. Uh, okay, rather pretty set. Everything is set here. Uh, let's put some sensible spoke code. 0562 ATC is already on and TICAS is already TIRA. Good, so all that is good. Uh, here is good. Uh, takeoff is a memo takeoff, no blue, and lights. We just need the lights to go, and that's it. Okay, so mini briefing. Departing from runway 21, runway heading up to 5 DME, then turn left to intercept the 175 radial to cross 10 DME at or above 1600. That's not going to be a problem. On the vertical, we're going to keep SRS down to 1500, that is climb thrust, and 3000, that is acceleration, and that is also transition. Um, yep, that is it. Anything else? Any questions, suggestions? Okay, so let's pretend that we are clear for takeoff. So let's go ahead and turn all the lights. And there we go, all the lights. We are ready for takeoff. So let's release our parking brake here. And let me set our flight time here. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. This is a very neat exercise, 
and this airplane is in a great, great, this mod, should I say, is great uh, in, in that it allows me to do this kind of exercises now with uh, very realistically. Of course, again, we will never do this kind of exercises in real life. This is just for entertainment on the flight simulator, desktop flight simulator only. All right, so here we are, uh, lining up on runway 21. There it is, runway 21, heading matches, all is good. Let's go. Okay. Manual Flex 60 SRS Auto Thrust Blue. One hundred knots. V one rotate. Runway track. Positive climb. Gear up. Okay, gear is up, no lights. Now we maintain runway track. Let me zoom in a little bit so we see what we're doing. 1500, that is climb thrust, thrust climb. And we keep the pitch up because we want to keep the speed until 3000 feet. 3000 feet will be acceleration plus transition. And then we wait until 5 DME here and where can we over. So here it is, 3,000 feet, open climb, pitch down to accelerate, set standard, and set standard, approaching 5 DME, we will make a left turn to intercept the 175, there we go, 5 DME, turning left, 30 degrees of turn, Crossing S, speed, flaps up. And uh, let me discern this real quick. And this real quick. There we go. Okay, and we are turning to about 135 here. 140, 135. There it is. Okay, while we are accelerating to 250, and now we just need to wait until the CDI start to center here in the 175 course. We need to cross 10 DME at or above 1600. We are already more than 6000, so that's disregard that. It's not going to be a limitation today. So after the call checklist is complete. There we go, we are just about to be, and we can set this also to 175. Okay, CDI is alive. We are on the speed, so we can start pitching up a little bit. There we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, there we are, we're in the 175 radial, we are crossing 10 miles and we are crossing 10,000 feet as well, that means we can accelerate to 290, so let's do that. Okay, yeah, I overshot just a tiny bit, 10,000, we need to switch the lights off and the seat belt. But let me first get really established here in the 175, 175, there it is. Okay, perfect, so we are, we are here. Let me set also my climb speed. There you go, now we are climb speed, so we will pitch up to maintain that speed. Remember in the climb, we are, the, the thrust is fixed at maximum climb thrust, so we use pitch to control our speed. 
All right, so here we are. Now it's a good time to turn the lights off. Turn the circuit light off. And yep, there we are. So what is next? Next is to level off by 200. Okay, hold on. Speed is decaying, so I'm gonna pitch down a little bit more to increase back speed to 290. So next is the level off, and next is the turn. And remember that we are in this leg here. Let's check the chart. We are going to 40 DME here. Let's see if we can look at the chart. There we go. It's 4 DME, 40 DME until Everett. At that point, we turn left to the 09er 5 which is going to Cuenca VOR. So to recap, we have the single pointer here pointing towards the view, the Guayaquil VOR DME, which is behind us. We are 20 miles from there. And the double pointer is pointing towards the Cuenca VOR. We should be intercepting to right the 0 9 or 5 to, to that point. Okay, we are right in the CDI, which means we are right in the airway. And it should, yeah, that's that's uh, there in the in the position, airplane position in the chart. Okay, so we are good. So what is next? Turn anticipation. Yeah, the uh, 40 DME is the intersection between the airway from Cuenca and from Guayaquil. And it's not a fly over waypoint, it's a fly by waypoint, so we can do turn anticipation. What exactly that means? It means that we need to start the turn early so that once we finish with turn, we will be pretty much established on the 0 9 or 5 to Cuenca. How much early? Well, that depends. Our ground speed right now is 371, so we take 1% of that. Okay, hold on, we are about to, to level up here, so speed out start. That is good, and let me pitch down to level off of 200 and then we can continue our discussion okay so we're almost there one alt cruise okay and there we are 200 level perfect all right so how much early is one percent of the ground speed so we are 3.8 will be that uh, so 3.8 DME before 40 DME. So basically four four miles before means 36. At 36 DME we're gonna start the turn towards the the Quake of VOR that should be the 0905, and then we change the frequencies and all that in the in the box. Okay, let me turn uh, slightly because we are slightly deviated to the right so let me turn left just a slightly bit we're we're just about to start the turn anyway so it doesn't really matter okay good so 35 35 30, well, we said at 36 we will do the turn so we are just about to hit that point and there is 36 let's start the turn all the turns are 25 to 30 degrees of back. There we go. Nothing more than 30. There we go. Good. So we are turning to about 0, 0.9 or 5. So what happened with the heading there? Uh, so where, where is my heading? Why it was it 300? Uh, okay. No idea. But anyway, 0, 0.9 or 5. Heading is just as a reference, 0, 09 or 5. There we go. Okay, approaching that. So, okay. So we are just about to to get established on the 0, 09 or 5. There we are. Okay, so what is next? Next is to tune the radius. So nav radio here. Uh, Quake VOR 114. 114. 0.5 under number 1 radio with 0, 09 or 5. 
on the course okay and we have that charlie uniform victor is correct correct bme is correct and as you can tell we are slightly to the left so let's turn to the right to to recenter the cdi here to be exactly on the airway center line so that should be enough as a correction now we just wait for the cdi to get back on the center Okay, so what is next? We next descend to 17,000. So let's see. We are here in this area. And let's remember that the minimum altitude here is 17,000. And then we will enter the VOR to continue our descent from 17,000 to 16,000. And to 15,000 eventually. So, okay, we are back in the center line. So let me set here 795. That's it. Okay. Good. So, oh, we are runway track, that's why. Boom, there we go. Heading. Okay. Well, now we need to maintain 0,905 on the track here. We need to descend to 17,000 and uh, 250 below 10, but 10 is above 8,000. 400 which is the Quaker elevation so basically 250 below 19 and uh, plus 200 maximum for the holding as per the chart here maximum 200 speed for the holding and for the outbound leg as well so oops that's a uh, pressure change there okay that's the pressure change from the coastal area to the highlands so let's let's climb a bit to maintain fly level 200 yeah in real life pressure change is not abrupt it's just gradual very gradual so you don't even notice but yeah this is simulator stuff okay and i should say this is uh desktop simulator stuff all right so we are back at 200 so when to start the descent we need to start the descent from 200 to 17,000. that is uh, 3000 feet 1,000 feet a minute, that is 3 minutes, and plus we need to decelerate. So we are doing 380, we're doing about 6 miles per minute, times 3, 6 times 3, 18, 18 miles, and plus a little bit to decelerate. So let's call it, we can start at uh, around 20 miles, 20 DME, 21, 22 DME, something like that. We, it, it, it will be good to start at the scene towards the towards the point of UR. And like I said initially it's gonna be sent to 17,000. So let me go ahead and change this to oh come on. I hate this thing. Ah, there we go. Okay. And let me go to 17,000. Okay. So we are maintaining 200 and we will descend at 20 DME, we said. And turning left to correct for the CDI here as well. Let's see the chart. Okay, so once we enter the hold, it's going to be 261 outbound for one and a half minutes because the hold is above 14,000 feet. And then right turn to 081. Good, so got it. There we go. We're about to start the descent. 20 DME, there we go. So let's set again this as a reference only. Yeah, yeah, maybe something like that will do it. And let's do a selected speed. Okay, and actually let's start descending here or decelerating, should I say. So I'm going to decelerate all the way to 200 knots, which is the maximum. Okay, so that will be a gradual deceleration. Now we are back in the in the center line, so let's go back to track. Perfect. Okay. So let's use 19 as the 10,000 because airport elevation 8.4 plus 10, 18.4 round up to 19. So 19, we are about to cross the the point equivalent to 10,000 above uh, sea level, you know. Okay, oops, we have anti-ice detected. Yeah. Where? Where? Explain me. Show me how it's possible that we have 
eyes at this point is ridiculous. And TIT mass 9, there is absolutely no way on earth that will happen. But anyway, let's clear that. Yeah, that's the Azovo idea. Anyway, passing 19. So let's go ahead and set the sign again. The lights again. And with that, we are fully ready. Now we need to enter a little bit of uh, information here. So now we are 2 for 0 below 10. That's good. And we will continue decelerating towards the 200 for our holding. So enter destination data. Okay, so we'll do that in the performance page. So let's go ahead. Next phase, next phase, clear this message. And we see that it's 1027. 1027. Okay, the temperature is 15 degrees. 15 degrees. Wind is 320 at, uh, what is that? 320 at 3, okay, 320 at 3, 320 at 3, okay, transition right now, so 1025. Okay, one zero to five. One zero to five. Descend it to. There we go. Okay, my transition was one eight thousand. And finally, the minima is eighty six thirty. So eighty six thirty thousand feet to level off. A 630, there we go. So correct, 1000 feet to level up, and we are five miles to there, and we are almost approaching the speed as well. Okay, so that is fantastic. So let's reduce to 500. All right, so let's see. We're just about, about to cross the VOR, sorry. So after crossing, it will be turning right to 261. 170 until crossing. We are at the speed, correct. Okay. Okay. Alt star. Okay, we are just about to cross the VOR. Alt. Okay, there it is. Crossing the viewer now. Turning right to 61. And now we can descend to 150. So let me set that here. 150. Okay, and let's set that minus 500 feet a minute. It's okay. Good. And we can also set here the nav rate, we can change to 0 081. There we go. Perfect. So we got it all set up. And uh, once uh, we are established on the outbound, we will start in the turn once we cross the beam position from the VOR. So let's see, we are maintaining the maximum speed. We are descending to 150. We are turning to 261, which is the outbound. And uh, we just need to level off on the outbound and start the, the time. One minute and a half because we are above 14,000 feet. Okay. Okay, just about to be level here at 261. Okay, 261 time because we are a beam already. Okay, so how much is the time? One and a half minutes. Continue descent to 15,000. And we are in the outbound of the holding. Descending to one five thousand. This outbound leg is one minute and a half, and we are right here. We are in this part. This holding is not up to scale, so we're here. We will turn back to zero eight one, and from there we will continue on the outbound leg for the procedure. Zero eight one, descending to twelve thousand five hundred until seven mile DME, maximum eleven DME during the turn. 
to be established at the 12 DME from the India Lima Charlie, which is 110.9, the ILS 235. And final approach point is at uh, 10.1 DME 11.7. So I'm going to descend with flap 1. Before 7 DME, I will set flap 2. Then I will uh, select the gear and flap 3 and flap full once in establishing the localizer. Uh, what else? For the miss approach, uh, straight ahead 235, still crossing 9 DME at 10,300, and then turning left to heading up 016 back to the VOR and to enter the hold at 150. Okay, that is the quick briefing for what we are doing. We are almost 1 minute 30, and we are also approaching 1 minute 30, turning back to intercept the 081. There we go, and now we can reset the chrono, we don't need that anymore. Alright, what is next? Just to intercept the 081. And let's put that here as a reference, this heading here, 081, okay. There we go, let's shallow up this a little bit until we see some signs of movement here on the CDR. There we go, perfect. And we are approaching 150 as well on QNH 1025. Perfect. Looks like we are going to be very well, maybe just a little bit of overshooting. Yeah, a little bit of overshooting. Okay, no problem. We will correct that. Keep descending to 150. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to correct this overshooting a little bit. Right. Good. 150 and we are six miles okay so like i said uh, we will be crossing with flap one so i'm going to go ahead and select flap one now we are below 20 000, so flap one and i'm going to set speed of 180 and we are establish again on the 081 alt star Alt. Perfect. Okay. Fantastic. This is this is a great exercise. Okay. So we maintain C of A1. We are flaps one. We are S speed. We have our V approach selected. Actually we can activate now the approach phase. V approach 124. Okay, perfect. And the auto break is medium because this is kind of a short runway here it's 1900 meters only 6200 feet and is a high elevation so it's not the longest runway for this type of airplane all right 15,000 nothing less until we cross the VOR and then we will continue our descent to 12.5 so I'm gonna go ahead and set here 12.5 good as a reference and we are just about to cross the BOR. There we go. There we go. We are over the BOR. So minus 700 feet a minute will do it. As a reference. And here we go. It's set into 12.5 until. 7 DME as per the graph. Look, we're right there. Okay, 7 DME maximum 11 for the turn. Okay. And around 6 DME, I'm going to set plus 2. So that is next. During the turn, we will arm the localizer scales here 
yeah this is a very short trip but very busy doing doing this exercise of raw data instrument navigation that's how we used to fly back in the 90s but of course without the fantastic aid and help of fly-by-wire and auto thrust and all that stuff and track lines and the speed trend vectors and all that stuff uh, all, all that makes much much easier nowadays but still it's a challenge when you do it like this without magenta lines and everything just to keep you know yourself up in the game so we are very well established we are approaching 60 me there we go 60 me so flaps two and now i'm gonna set to manage speed and continue our descent come on yeah when when we set the flaps we always balloon a little bit 7 dme there it is so now turning left and maximum 11 dme from the VOR. we want to make sure that we respect that before we do anything else now that we are turning we can continue down to 11 7 and we can set the localizer scales as well for both sides all right so now we have india lima charlie identified we have 110.9 correct we have the and we can change this to also to a ILS, so India Lima Charlie course 235, that is correct. ADME, that is correct. So we can shallow our turn now. We are kind of in a base situation now. So we will intercept at about 12 miles the localizer and we maintain 11.7 until 10.1. The airport is at 8.4, so plus uh, 1, 9.4, now 1000. 9400 we need to be fully fully configured and uh, 1000 feet to level off and we are in the glide slope already just waiting for the CDI to start set there it is starts entering and now we can I'm gonna arm the approach here to have the the flight director guidance which is another amazing help very valuable for this kind of exercises uh there we are glide slope is established and localizer almost about to be established as well so i was saying uh, i need to be fully established at 9.4 and the localizer captured there it is so we are fully established now on the localizer and the glide slope we need to verify 10.1117 so 10.1 let's see 10.4, 10 10.3, 10.1, 11, 7. So, yeah, ah, the pressure was a little bit higher, right? The pressure was 1027, that is why. 1027, there we go. 1027, okay. All right, that is perfect. So, that's been verified. Okay. So, I was saying fully established, but uh, 9.4. I'm going to be a little bit more conservative than that and be fully established by 10. So, at 11, I will set gear down and flaps 3. And once that is all set and approaching 10, I will set flaps full. And in that way, we will be fully, fully established by 10. Okay, there you go, 11. So, gear down, flaps 3. Arm the spoilers advise the crew all right okay correcting for glide there again that was the ballooning of the flaps always that you set flaps you have to pitch down a little bit more even with the fly-by-wire system that's still that's uh, that you, it still needs a little bit of help in that respect so anyway we are recapturing here the the glide, let's see in the chart, crossing the POR, what it should be here. It used to be, I remember, the good old days. It used to be a note that we should cross the POR at 10,000. 
So let's see, we are just about to cross the POR at 10,000 and uh, approaching 10,000, so plus full. And with that, the landing checklist should be also complete. All right, so the, 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 this cross check, especially in IMC, right now we are BMC, but in IMC conditions, these cross checks of, of distance versus altitudes are quite important. So 5 DME, VOR, and 10,000. That cross check, that, that is just to, to, uh, to verify that the glide slope is actually correct. We are not having false, false glide slope capture or something like that. So now we just continue to minima, which is 8630, and then concentrate on my landing. Landing memo is uh, landing no blue. Perfect. So we have everything we need. Correcting for glide. So I can't I can let the glide deviate more than one uh, dot. All the approaches plus minus one dot, plus minus one dot on the localizer on the glide slope. Speed minus five plus ten. All that is part of the stabilized approach criteria. If you don't meet that, you have to go around. Okay, now let's concentrate on the landing. I think we've done everything. Uh, 1000 is checked, missed approach altitude, that is missing. So let's go ahead and set that 12.5. 500. Check. 12.5. Okay. Check. Okay, again, correcting for glides. Airport in sight. Above. Check. 400. Check. Minimum. Continue. Okay, reverse, this cell. Eighty knots. Minor braking. And there we go, welcome to Cuenca. As you can sell, as you can tell, there is not a lot of, of room to spare in this runway. It is quite challenging, as you can tell, also lots of mountains around. Uh, sorry, this, this was not a visual flight, it was uh, uh, instrument practice, so we couldn't, I couldn't show you the, the visuals. This, this place is really amazing with all their mountains and everything, it's beautiful scenery. But today our goal was not the visual sightseeing flight, but the practicing of VORs, holdings, and uh, ILS with the raw data. And with the help of this amazing modification from the fly-by-wire guys, they've done a terrific job of making this airplane like what it is today. All right, anyway, that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Let me stop here. I'm going to set my... Okay, so that was the flight time, about 34 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and set parking brake here. And uh, said goodbye to you, why is this moving? Okay, there we go. All right, guys, thank you very much for um, uh, for watching. And likes and subscribe, you know the deals. And we'll see you in the very next time. Any comments are always appreciated. Thank you, have a great day.